You know, it's no secret that most unintended pregnancies happen um, when there's a failure of birth control. And a lot of times that happens because birth control is inaccessible, um, whether that's uh, financially inaccessible or sometimes folks just can't get prescriptions filled based on where they live um, or their economic circumstances at the time. So having something that's available over the counter in pharmacies, you know, just on the street from your house, um, we, we're yet to have learned the price point and the exact date of availability. But this is a game changer and it's a it's a great um, step forward forward for, you know, for availability for, for folks who, um, you know, have had so many attacks on freedom this year. All right. There were a lot of smart caveats built into your answer. And so I want to talk about them, which cost continues to be a question mark if what we're talking about is access, uh, additional barriers like needing to fill out paperwork in order to access something mm -hmm. like this over the counter. I, I wonder sort of as you watch this unfold, because as you said, there's still a few question marks here, what it is that you'll be watching for if the core question here is access. I think we'll be looking for accessibility um, for folks who, you know, live in rural areas, for poor folks, for working folks. Um, you know, we'll be looking for um, prescription coverage, like is this going to be covered through folks' insurance? Um, you know, so I think that's the type of thing that, I mean, we're going to be looking for what everyday, you know, women are looking for, like how am I going to afford it? How accessible is it? Um, most people don't get up and say, I'm going to, you know, go and see what happened in terms of policy or what laws got passed. You know, you walk to the end of your, your street and you go to your pharmacy and you see if you can afford the medicine that you need. And the tragedy of what's happened over the last, um, certainly, couple of years and, and and, you know, through other attacks on abortion is that it's made it harder for everyday folks to decide when and how to have families. The O pill will make that easier. Right. And this pill is referred to as the mini pill. The pill that the majority of women who can use oral contraceptives use is a combination pill. So there's also still a lot to be done when it comes to the FDA approving what a majority of women who rely on oral contraceptives actually use. What would it look like to advance this story? I mean, I think what we're looking for is accessibility for the medicine um, that folks need when they need it, you know? And so without delving into the, you know, the, the science of, of what each individual person needs, I think that the real um, kind of nugget and the goal that we should be going for is that the decision about what contraceptive to use, when and how to have a family um, is between, you know, a woman and her doctor um, and her family, and that the government is not um, involved in that either through policy or through putting obstacles to accessing that care. I have less than a minute left, but I do want to ask you, we have seen with, with some other medications in this space, pharmacies choose uh, not to provide access to, to that drug in states where it is seen as contentious. Do you have any concern about that with Opil? Um... I, I'm not sure. I mean, I think that we'll we'll have to see the way that it plays out. But I think that those pharmacies should be held to account. And I think that one of the things that absolutely has to happen is that the legalities, um, the legal ramifications of doing so, um, need to become clear, um, both for dispensing medicine for states who have tried to create de facto bans by making it unclear if pharmacies are able to legally, um, but also just to say that if if this is the law, then you're actually compelled to follow it. Um, um, and that there should be, um, you know, I guess, legislation and, and um, follow up on that.